As we say hello to Gordon Ward, one of the six candidates running for mayor all through this week. We'll be introducing you so you have a chance to learn more and make an informed decision October 21st or before. Mr. Ward, welcome to Breakfast Television. Thank you. Good to see Pleasure. you. Edmontonians, some will be heading to the polls today as advanced polls open. Many of them may be seeing your name for the first time. Who is Gordon Ward? Well, I'm a born and raised Albertan. My father moved around quite a bit because he was a surveyor. We saw the birth of a lot of small towns. So by the time I was 16 years old, we've moved about 24 times. Mm. So I have a real strong sense of being Albertan. Um, moved to Edmonton the first time uh, when I was about 17. Uh, been in and out of the province. Left the province in the early 80s, jokingly to tell people that I wanted to make sure I didn't work in the oil patch. But mm. I'd, I'd done my dues in the oil patch. I left to go get a uh, academic career lived across Canada and ended up in Montreal working in an engineering company doing multinational projects. Um, became a businessman for quite a few years consulting out of Montreal and eventually when it came time to settle down raise a family come back home which was Alberta at that time and that was in the uh, mid 1990s. And so now you're, you're living in Edmonton you work in, in the field of medical technology hyperbaric medical technology we don't yes. have time to get into it though it is fascinating. Well, why did you decide to return to Edmonton? Why is Edmonton considered your home? You lived all over the place. The feeling, it's just, uh, it's the capital city. Uh, I had offices in Edmonton, Red Deer, Camrose, and Calgary, and out of the four, I chose Edmonton to be the home base for the office. You're a family man? Very much. I heard you uh, speaking about how you don't like the direction the city's going financially in the same way that you wouldn't like parents setting their kids up to fail with some sort of a financial legacy that dumped debt onto their shoulders. Is the economy and Edmonton's borrowing situation a big platform for you when it comes to your run for the mayor's job? That's one of the significant platforms, and I agree with you. I, uh, not that I wanted to watch my grandparents pass away, but you kind of anticipate that you get an inheritance, not a debt, and I think that's the way we're going. The largest impetus for me to move into walk, working through this campaign or putting my name out as a leader for the city of Edmonton is I see business practices that have been established over the last two decades that really have shown themselves in the bankruptcy of Detroit, the state of California, half the European Union and the United States of America and I think that's where we're going. We keep hear, hearing people reference Detroit though. One, one of the more, uh, let's say, more prominent mayoral candidates keeps talking about Detroit as well. The fact of the matter is though, Edmonton's debt is only about 10% of that of Detroit's and a lot of people are saying it's not a good comparison. Talked to Detroit a few years ago and they only had a small debt. It's not so much the debt. We all have a debt. I have a mortgage, you might borrow, borrow money for a car or something like that, but at some point it gets out of hand. So having the debt to begin with for, for capital assets that help build your house or whatever else is one thing. But when you have a management philosophy behind it, it becomes a gambling issue. And we have organizations in the province for, for gambling addiction. And so it becomes a debt addiction. That's how you would characterize the current council under the current mayor. Uh, you've called our LRT uh, set up an embarrassment. What do you mean by that? It started in, in the late 1970s, 1977, 1978. In that time, Edmonton could have enjoyed the, the status of being one of the first in the world with the most advanced technology. 35 years later, our biggest issues are trying to figure out how to maintain it, not only just build it or advance it. So we've lost that impetus. Okay, so you want to see uh, advancement uh, and expansion of the LRT, implementation of more technology, but at the same time, you don't like how much the city's spending. I mean, how can these two ideas come together and marry themselves? I think it's a matter of taking the finances that we do have, living with what we've got as a budget, misdirecting funds for capital projects that are going to show themselves five, six, seven, or ten years down the road, or even 20 years down the road, at the same time while our infrastructure is failing and deteriorating and not completing projects that we've started. We have numerous projects in the city and the LRT is probably the biggest one that we started 35 years ago. And somewhere along the line, we forgot a fundamental principle. Finish what you start. Show up 35 years later and now what you're doing is trying to repair what's left of it, not build on to it. So we've lost some fundamental principles that our grandparents taught us. Finish what you start and be financially responsible with the money that you have. 
Okay, Gordon, stick around. We've got a whole lot more ground to cover. Gordon will be joining us again in about 22 minutes' time. If you have a question that you'd like him to tackle, be sure to post it on our Facebook page. We've got that uh, set up right now. Good to go. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter as well, at BT Edmonton. At 628, we're back with Say What right after this.